Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, we have been talking of the last few times about the Bible, its origin, where it came from, how it came to be, how many books there are, why they're the way they are, how many sections, etc. And today, after we've uh, learned how the Bible came to be and how at the last time you became scripture scholars because you were able to figure out what books belonged in the Bible and which did not, Today, I'd like to take it from another vantage point, and that is, now that we've learned all that about the origin of the scriptures, the sacred scripture or the Bible, the question is, what do we believe about the Bible? And I think that's very important. So I think the first thing that we believe about the Bible is that it is the inspired word of God. No question about that. It's not like any other book that has been written. And as I pointed out to you, every year, for years and years and years, and even before the New York Times bestseller list, it was always one of the most popular books ever, ever put together, ever written. And we believe it to be the Word of God, and that's why we believe that it has lasted for so long. And that's why we believe it's so important for us to be knowledgeable about what it says and what it does not say. The second thing is that we believe it not only to be the inspired Word of God, we believe it to be the revelation of God. What does that mean? Well, it means if you wanted to get to know someone, that person can hold back who or she is unless there came a point where that person decided to reveal themselves to you, to tell you about their inner self, to tell you about their inner thoughts and fears and worries, etc. Otherwise, you can meet a person and even maybe work alongside of them for many years or perhaps have a neighbor that you lived alongside of for many years and never really get to know them. But when a person is honest and genuine and reveals themselves to you, you get to know the very nature of who they are. And that's what God did, and that's why we have the sacred scripture. Because this God who is so mysterious, this God who is almighty and all-powerful, is a God that wants us to know about him and his nature and his love for us and his care for us and why he sent us his son Jesus to show us in a very concrete way, what he taught in the sacred scriptures. So the word of God, the sacred scripture is the word of God. It's the revelation of God. And it was written by human authors under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we learn, the Bible just didn't come down out of heaven. It came to us through the inspired word of God inspiring authors to, to write and to make a written record of what the Lord intended us to understand. Now, when God used human authors, of course, he had to use human instruments. And that's why some of them are written in different languages, different literary forms, different styles. But beyond and below it all is God's Word, God revealing himself to us. And I always liken it to a letter that you might receive from a friend. If you got a letter from a friend, even though you don't see the friend and you just see the written word, you don't say, I got a letter from a computer or I got a letter from a black ink pen. The black ink or the computer was the instrument by which the person you don't see has communicated with you. And sacred scripture is like that. We don't see God face to face, although he revealed himself in the person of Jesus Christ. But those scripture readings are as written to us as a dear friend would write letters to us to talk about themselves and to reveal themselves to us. So God uses human instruments, human authors, but always under the influence 
of the Holy Spirit. The next thing that we need to understand about sacred scripture is that it can never be contradicted. Now sometimes people think that often the church trumps the scriptures or some other groups believe that Catholics really don't follow the Bible. That could not be further from the truth. We've already learned where the scripture came from. But what we need to understand is now that the written word has been given to us, nothing, no one can contradict the teaching of the sacred scriptures. It's the infallible, inspired word of God and the revelation of God. And the last thing to be understood about what we believe in is that, remember, it's the written record of the spoken word. The written record of the spoken word. Listen to what St. John writes in the fifth chapter of his gospel, uh, verse 21, excuse me, John verse 21 and 25, uh, chapter 21, verse 25. I'm having another senior moment. And by the way, speaking of senior moments, uh, I believe the last time when I wrote on the board behind me, I misspelled the word tradition. And there was a gentleman by the name of Tim who wrote in and seemed rather distraught over the fact that I misspelled it. So I apologize and I hope it didn't ruin your entire day. But at any rate, if we look at John chapter 21, verse 25, listen to what John writes. He says, there are still many other things that Jesus said and did. Yet if they were all written down in detail, I doubt there would be enough room in the entire world to hold the books to record them all. What we're hearing is that the written word was written after the spoken word. And we've already established that. For the first 300 and some years, there was no written Bible. It was passed on by word of mouth. And we established that that's what we mean by tradition, with a capital T. And if you take the N off, you have the word traditio to pass on by word of mouth. And so we believe these very important elements of Scripture. And I would suspect that pretty much every Christian would believe that. However, there is a point that sometimes is difficult for some to understand. And that is that revelation is not limited to Scripture. Now, remember I said it cannot contradict Scripture, but it's not limited to Scripture. You say, well, what do you mean? I mean, if it's in the Bible, yes, it cannot be contradicted. But remember that the church existed before Scripture. The tradition, the authority of the church, the authority of the apostles, the authority of the evangelists existed before the Bible itself. Remember we said that it was at the Council of Rome in the year 382 that the Bible as we know it came to be, but every Sunday, Mass, we pray after the homily what we know as the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We pray that. And remember when that was written and when that was composed? Not 382, 325. So here you have the believing church proclaiming what we proclaim every Sunday before the written word came to be as we know it. So when we say that revelation is not limited to Scripture, it means that God just didn't reveal once and for all but he continues to reveal himself through the teaching authority of the church. And he has given us that authority so that we may come to know that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Now the next time, we're going to talk a little bit about how we can authentically understand the word of God. We've heard about where it came from, how it came to be, when it was written, who put it together. But now the question is, how do we interpret and how do we read the sacred scripture in a way 
that we can be sure that we're not in error, that we're authentically teaching and hearing and proclaiming what God intended when he first began to write to us. So we'll conclude now with a blessing. And as always, I pray that Almighty God may watch over you and bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.